Hello everyone, my name is Demon Mama. I'm a political edutainer and streamer here on YouTube with a wonderful warm community of people devoted to helping one another grow and thrive. I'm a non-binary trans woman who uses she, her pronouns. Recently, as the result of a conflict with another content creator and streamer by the name of Riley Grace Roshong, some pretty major claims have been circling around about me. The claims are succinctly as follows. The first claim is that I am an immoral person for irresponsibly pushing a bad argument for gender self-identification. The second claim is that I am irresponsible in general with my platform as a public trans person and should be deplatformed. The third claim is that I am a bad faith interlocutor who abuses other people and deliberately uses manipulative tactics to harm others. I disagree strongly with all of these claims being made about me, and in this video, I will provide evidence and context that will reveal how grossly irresponsible and uncharitable and dishonest these claims are. Part 1. History and Context. The Debate with Riley Grace Roshong. Riley and I have been friendly colleagues for some time, and our robust Discord communities have been partnered for about two months until Riley broke off this partnership without communication on Monday, February 15th, following a debate that broke out on our channels. Originally, Riley had come by for a joke meme conversation about furries and about Godzilla vs. King Kong. As you can tell, this was a lighthearted, fun conversation with no real stakes, which was not included in Riley's uploaded video. At some point, we mutually grew bored of this conversation and began discussing other things, including various chit-chat about online streaming, being trans, etc. A minor disagreement with another creator was brought up casually, and from this, a secondary topic arose. But also doesn't include people who we don't want to include, right? We probably don't want to say that, like, um, and this is my, all right, this is also my take, mm -hmm. and... This is probably my this is this is probably like pro my my spiciest trans take, um, but oh, I think boy. I'm pretty pilled on this or whatever. Right, sure. I don't think that we can just say anyone who identifies as trans is trans. From here on out, the conversation was incredibly personal and intense, and I was doing my absolute best to de-escalate and communicate my desire to no longer participate in the conversation. While I recognize that I could have forcefully ended the call after my requests to halt the topic were ignored, I considered Riley trustworthy and a friend, and I did not feel comfortable kicking her from my Discord in order to end a conversation on my show. My show is my job. Ending a conversation abruptly could also mean ending the show, and it would leave many viewers unsatisfied, frustrated, and with misunderstandings in their minds. I have never before had a caller, colleague, or a friend push me to continue discussing a topic after repeated requests to move from it. Predictably, the conversation became increasingly intense. Riley was raising her voice, talking over me, and repeatedly used terms like, I need you to answer this question. I'm going to need you to just answer this one question. Just answer this one question for multiple different questions. This gave me the direct impression that I would be severely judged or impugned if I did not answer. At one point, the shouting got so intense that I threatened to mute, not kick, Riley, and I temporarily carried through with that in order to express my discomfort with the discussion once again. As the conversation went on, there were mutual misunderstandings and miscommunications which are the natural result of complicated discussions on highly personal topics. And for minor disagreements or slights, I do not impugn Riley or anyone for that matter. I myself became defensive at times and certainly had some misunderstandings of my own. However, this conversation did not stop at minor misunderstandings or miscommunications. At multiple points in the conversation, Riley implied heavily that I was being irresponsible with my platform as a public trans person. 
Yeah, I said, no, I am getting frustrated because you're okay. a public figure, and if you make a bad argument and other people adopt your bad argument, then you are going to so lose you them are the making that. This is why I said so. I was correct in saying that you're making the destiny argument. You're what this do you is, mean? I'm making the destiny wait, argument. Wait, you're this actually saying you're you're, you're, you make you're a argument public figure. Well, guess what? Right now, you are being cringe, and as a representative, a public what? figure, as the as a representative and a public figure, uh, who is representing trans people by your own argument. Your mm -hmm. cringiness right now. Wait, is... wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. How am I being cringe by pointing out how you are being clearly logically inconsistent? How the fuck is wait, that being I cringe? literally I'm looking out people to make sure that they don't make dumb fuck arguments and lead themselves into bad situations you that why? you would wait, lead wait. them into. Riley, people Riley, make Riley, more Riley, arguments. Riley, and they get Riley, destroyed. Riley. This is exactly no, no, why. Don't wait, wait, no, no, stop like this. I'm harming people when you Riley, are literally harming people this. and impugning me morally. Riley, holy God. This, to me, is a rather severe accusation that fixates on my identity in a way that I was not and am not comfortable with. I expressed discomfort with this throughout the conversation, which was ignored. In my genuine attempt to engage in good faith, I was willing to open up about a severely traumatic experience I had during the process of my gender transition. This was harshly questioned and was later, as I will show, used against me in a way that is nothing short of cruel and offensive. Towards the end of the discussion, I was feeling very hurt, but was still attempting to engage in good faith. At this point, I said that I felt like this conversation had become an attempt to justify the existence of trans people via logic, but that trans people should not have to justify themselves in the marketplace of ideas. This statement was meant to be an olive branch, but appears to have been misinterpreted very negatively, and Riley, following this, swore at me and left the call. While I do not believe that what I said was particularly out of line, I realize how, in the moment, it was not as clear as it could have been. Nonetheless, my imperfect communication here does not justify what has followed in the days since the debate. After she left the call, I was extremely frustrated and distressed, and one of my lead mods advised me to end stream and cool off because it was clear that I was hurting. I agreed, and I ended the stream. Concurrently, Riley continued streaming where she became embroiled in a debate with members of her own community, including her admin team and her moderators. During this conflict, she banned me from her Discord, which I have been a member of for over half a year, blocked me on social media, and deleted the Discord partnership which my Discord team and her Discord team have both worked on extensively. From the moment the debate ended, there was a loose consensus in the leadership of both of our communities that this had not been productive and should not become the topic of further stream or YouTube content. I agreed with my team's assessment, especially because so many deeply personal issues had come up during the debate, and we took action to unlist and unlink the video of the debate immediately. The video of the debate has remained unlisted and unlinked until now, at which point it has become necessary for the record to be set straight. There is a link to the full debate down below, including the content that was removed by Riley. Riley, prompted similarly by her team, including her editor, was unwilling to commit to unlisting the video and the conflict with her team continued. At the time, unbeknownst to me, into the next day, Tuesday, the 16th of February. Part 2. The Death of a Community Since the day of the debate, nearly every member of Riley Grace Roshong's admin and moderation teams has resigned publicly. As of the writing of this script, I have been informed that only six members of that team remain. I now know that over the course of Tuesday the 16th, the admin and moderation teams, which includes multiple of Riley's personal friends, attempted to dissuade her from posting the video to YouTube as a mainline video. These requests were not respected, and despite protest from her own editor, Riley decided to proceed with posting her own edited version of the video. Oh, yeah. yeah, super stressed. Oh, he needs to be stressed. I just got home from my externship in Annapolis while multiple friends of mine left the server. And also, uh, um, I had class while I was learning that Destiny was looking at a debate that I had yesterday that's been uh, destroying my community. Yeah, no, it's, it's been great.
Riley's personal edit of the video contained a portion of an out of context casual conversation about my disagreements with a prominent member of another large streamers community. Riley has since admitted on her own stream to including this section intentionally, as she now agrees with this member's assessment that I am too crazy to interact with. In the following clip, Riley is disagreeing live on air with her own editor who confronts her about this. You're not gonna even fucking listen to us. No, I You're am listening to you. I'm willing to listen to people your if there's a point. I'm letting your community fucking die. It feels like it's burning to the ground and I hate it. No, I'm not going, like, I'm going to listen to you. Like, what do you think I'm doing right now? I'm literally listening to you. We are talking right now. I'm listening to you, okay? If you had listened to us at the right time, you wouldn't have that video up. You wouldn't have fucking Destiny here dropping the R word, dropping the T slur. Okay, listen, you're able to- Following the launch of the video, Riley was invited by the streamer Destiny to appear on his show to discuss her debate with me. The tone and rationality in Destiny's previous engagements with me speak for themselves. Dude, I felt myself becoming misogynistic just listening to her argue with this girl. I was turning into an incel in real time. Every time she spoke another sentence, I had to kick Mel another like two feet away from me because I hated women that much more. Like, and she's bad enough that like when I like I haven't posted my first video yet with her because I want her to die and fade into obscurity on the internet and never come back. Like that's how horrible I think. I don't want to give any more it. attention to Demon Mama. Describe King, if you want to go argue with her, you'll give yours, that's fine. Um, I honest to God, I think she's a worthless piece of shit that nobody should listen to. She actively harms the trans community. She actively harms any like SJW, like left leaning social causes. She actively harms women. She actively harms discourse on Twitch. Like, she actively harms like any community she would ever try to advocate for or speak on behalf of. Like, she's an incredibly damaging, disgusting, vitriolic, harmful figure to any of these causes on Twitch. I don't really want to like showcase that. If I'm ever bringing them on here, it's literally just to like make fun of them because fuck that person. Um, As you can see, Destiny has been very explicit about his desire to no longer see me with a platform. It naturally follows that his fan base has repeated these claims extensively and fabricated their own dishonest claims to match. Numerous prominent members of his community have called explicitly for my deplatforming. Here are some examples. Needless to say, many members of Riley's community were not comfortable with involving Destiny in a situation that they had already protested to. When the potentiality of a Destiny appearance was made public, the admin and moderation teams largely threatened to resign. They correctly feared an unmanageable influx of external, potentially abusive users to the server and unfriendly eyes on the situation. Riley did not respect their concerns, and many resigned on the spot, including founding members of the server. Since then, a number of slanderous claims have been made against those admins. Seemingly, in the name of further disparaging me, both Riley and Destiny were willing to put the most loyal and highly invested members of the RGR community in the crosshairs of online anger and hate. In the name of correcting the record, I will now read and display a few of these public resignations, which have been provided to me by the admins themselves. In my mind, and this is just me speaking what I'm feeling since this seems to be the venue, I don't care about the conversation with Demon Mama. I don't care whether you, Riley, were right or wrong in your argument, and whether you were or not is irrelevant. What I care about is your effect on the community. After you got off stream with Demon Mama, you took out your justified frustrations at a conversation that turned sideways on your own community. Then, when given constructive criticism on that particular stream, you ignored everyone and did something that will cause even more harm within this community. You often say that you don't want a sycophantic relationship, that you are open to criticism, that you welcome it. All of your actions in the past 24 hours has shown the opposite. I personally do not feel comfortable modding for this community if the past 48 hours is an indication of the future of this Discord. I do care for you, Riley. I hope that you can understand I wouldn't be typing out this message or wouldn't have put in the time and effort that I have in this community if I didn't. This community is important. I think the original mission statement of solidarity and learning is an admirable one, and I hope that continues. Unfortunately, I have a performance career and an activist life to think of, and in the area that I live in, 
being even tangentially related to somebody like Destiny would harm my future opportunities. I want you to understand that the actions you take have an effect on us and our lives outside of just this Discord. I'm relinquishing my modhood and will be leaving the community. I hope all the friends I've made here understand and know that I cherish them. I want everyone to know that as mods of the RGR community, our primary concerns were for the community that had been cultivated through the collective love, care, and labor of the people that made up the Discord. I personally, as a mod, left because of two reasons. One being that I have a reputation outside of that community being tangentially connected to controversial personalities would show poorly on me and my decision making. And two, I knew that if Destiny and his community got involved, it would make the inclusive, loving, and accepting community largely inaccessible to those who needed this community. This was not a group of mods going rogue or a community turning on their content creator because of a half-baked take. It was a community staged walkout. We, as people who were regarded and treated as Riley's friends, tried to draw boundaries, which is a completely healthy thing to do, and at every step, Riley crossed each boundary we tried to place. I personally take no joy in this. It has had effects on me emotionally, physically, and medically. None of us wanted this to happen. We have had our community hollowed out from the wonderful place it was and replaced with a DGG proxy server, and that is incredibly sad. That's what all this is. Sad. End of statement. Riley, please take down the video. Reconsider what you are doing. Riley, you have spoken extensively in the past about wanting to keep healthy relationships with those around you and not burning bridges, even when there are disagreements. What you are doing right now is not only ruining your friendship with Demon Mama, it's ostracizing her community and your own. I am scared. Please listen to us. I hate to draw comparisons like this, but you have been more charitable to people such as Destiny and Calvin Gara, actors who have done demonstrable harm to people in our community. I want to make clear what my contention is here. It's not that Riley disagreed with Demon Mama on the concept of gender identity, nor that she felt the need to defend her position. My problem has been with the way this whole situation has been handled since then. Riley has been hurting, I know that. She is seeking a way to express that pain and resolve her frustrations. The problem is that others are hurting too. She banned people, including a content creator, someone mere hours before she had been having a meme debate with, in a moment of anger and frustration and exhaustion. In the face of everyone saying this is a bad idea and not to do it, Riley has gone ahead and posted a video that will do nothing but cause more harm for all involved. I have more to say on this, but being on mobile is making me type slow and it is difficult to see what I am saying. I hate that I have to be the one to say this. I hate that I waited until after the video was posted to speak up. You need to do the right thing here, Riley. I hate to act like a parent here, but you need to take down this video. Too much damage is being done here. You need to talk to Demon Mama privately, ideally, and apologize for the way things went. You don't need to say you were wrong for having ideological differences, but you do need to show that you are the person you claim to be, the one who wants to build bridges, not burn them. I know you might not notice, but the community is hurting. No one here is comfortable right now. Riley, you are burning this server to the ground in some self-centered notion to protect yourself from an enemy that is insignificant. The harm you are doing substantially outweighs any defense that you have made. Congratulations. You are losing your friends, mods, and admins over this. You are losing the core of your community. The streams that followed Riley's appearance on Destiny's show represent, without a doubt, the most spiteful, dishonest, and cruel treatment I have ever received publicly in my life. Throughout the course of Wednesday, the 17th of February, both Riley and Destiny streamed about me for most of the day. Both of them pushed blatant misrepresentations of my positions, my arguments, and my personality, in addition to openly and publicly speculating on my mental state, the validity of my transition, and the worth of my work to thousands of viewers, all while Riley's community was collapsing. Riley repeatedly insulted her own community during the stream and looked past Destiny mocking not only her former community, but also trans rights activists in general, framing me as a representative of the most insane type of activist, leaning on stereotypes popularized by the anti-SJW movement and Gamergate. Content it's warning like, ahead for this clip. Um, and then you also have to keep in mind, you go to, um, are you in law school now? 
Oh yeah, no, I'm in law school. I'm, I'm pretty two sure. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very busy. I'm pretty sure. I could be totally wrong, guys. Maybe you live in San Francisco, but I'm pretty sure that you know that like the level of where trans discourse is on the internet is also so far removed from like where people in the real world are too that it's also like really crazy like there are people in the real world you might casually hear people still say things like she male and tranny like they just they don't think there's anything wrong with it hold on. did i miss it I, RJ, R, I love it let destiny say the t slur just like that wait hold on did you i didn't hear that uh some people say tranny or she male in real life should i say t slur uh, i don't know if i refer sorry oh okay yeah no people are saying don't say it. i mean like i've said it once or twice t slur uh, it should be noted that Riley did not provide pushback to this claim, nor the implications in the claim, much to the ire of her own community. She also did not provide pushback to Destiny downplaying his previous calls to deplatform me and his wishes for me to die. Uh -oh. Listen, I might have said I wanted to die, okay? Fuck Demon Mama. But it has nothing to do with her being trans. First video yet her. But we'll see what we said. Because I want her to die in state of security on the internet and never come back. Like, that's how horrible I think this person is. Because it's not just somebody that's like bad. Oh, fuck. I'm talking, I'm literally talking about her internet career. I wanted to die on the internet. But then I added like a fucking injunctive or whatever. I wanted to die in state of security on the internet. I'm literally talking about her internet career. I'm not saying die in real life. Although, you know what? Even if I did say that. I, my first video. I don't know if I'd say the same about like fucking Nick Fuentes or whatever. Like, fuck it, dude. But like. Because I want her to die in state of security on the internet and never come back. Like, that's how horrible I think this person is. Because it's not just somebody that's like. <sighs> I'm literally talking about their internet career. Right? Like, I want their Twitch stream to die. I want their YouTube to die. Like, but I would never want a human being to die, okay? In a video game. Off a video game. Or I, it, I would want them to die in a video game, but not in real life, okay? Perhaps the most disgusting and personally upsetting portion of all of this was having both Destiny and Riley speculate as to whether I had thought about gender enough in order to transition. Is he I... This sounds super shitty of me to say... But it's surprising that somebody wouldn't have reflected on this before. Um, before making like decisions to transition. These seem like incredibly important and personal aspects of your identity. It seems strange that you would have never heavily considered your identity prior to like making a big effort to change it. I can't tell if Demon Mama just maybe legitimately just hasn't thought about it before. Um, it's entirely possible because we call on trans people or gay people or anybody outside of the norm. Um, we're kind of expecting them to be more reflective on their identity than like a default character in society so that's kind of true but it seemed so but it seems strange to me that somebody wouldn't have considered this before that seems interesting yes which may, when i'm i'm sorry what i'm getting is i can't tell if she's trying to think of like what the answer really is or if she's trying to think of the answer she should give to win the debate because it seems odd to me that somebody wouldn't consider like have i you know if you're going to be trans like well have i been a man am i lying to myself about being a man like that seems like a uh, internal like um struggle that you would have already gone through have Throughout the day of streaming, Destiny and Riley would go on to appear on one another's shows repeatedly to accuse me of various unsubstantiated allegations, from being bad faith to being a harmful abuser who is bad for the trans community. No evidence is ever provided for these claims outside of their personal opinions. Riley also alleged that I was an immoral and irresponsible public trans person during this stream. The reason I put up the video was to make sure that if anyone wants to know why I banned Demon Mama from my community, why I have a negative opinion of her, why I think she is a morally bad person and does morally bad things, that I can be able to point to that and say, that's why. And you can draw your right. own opinions. You can agree with me. You can not agree with me. But you can go there and make your own determination. Again. Both streamers streamed about me for hours, and it should be noted that while Destiny asked Riley's permission to go over the video Riley posted, he never even tried to get mine. And until the video you are watching now, I have not publicly addressed the situation outside of one statement on a canceled stream, the purpose of which was simply to communicate to my audience why I was canceling the stream. Riley has, without any provocation, struck out against me, my community, and her own community almost non-stop since the debate on Monday. The level of aggression, cruelty, and complete lack of basic human respect is frankly stunning. Part 3. Setting the record straight, claims, and refutations. Now that I have made clear the context, history, and events of the previous week, I will take some time to address the spurious, hyperbolic, and outright dishonest claims made about me. 
The first of these is the claim that I am an immoral and irresponsible person for pushing a so-called bad argument for the validity of gender self-identification. Gender, identity, and consciousness are some of the most complex, nebulous, and difficult to understand concepts any human will ever grapple with. And they have been hotly disputed topics by philosophers and scientists even to this day. Even if you believe I did not perfectly communicate my ideas on gender, no communicator is perfect, and I agree, I did not perfectly communicate everything, I do not believe it is reasonable to conclude my messaging is irresponsible or immoral. Nonetheless, the claimed imperfection of my argument has been used since Monday as the pivotal point in justifying a campaign of hatred and disinformation about me. Tens of thousands of viewers across both Riley and Destiny's platforms have been told that I am bad for the trans community, that I am harmful, and that I am immoral. In another video, I will summarize and clarify my views on the nature of gender, but the conclusion of my argument is that it is most ethical to accept and allow gender to be a matter of self-identification. A person who claims they are a woman can, in good faith, be accepted as a woman. A person who claims they are non-binary can, in good faith, be accepted as non-binary. Other models of gender, in my opinion, lead to senseless exclusions, and significant complication of social interactions in a way that can hurt trans and cis people alike. Allowing people to identify as the gender of their choice is, in my opinion, the most sensical and ethical conclusion. For expressing this opinion, I was accused of being irresponsible with my messaging as a public trans person. I do not believe that this has been meaningfully substantiated and the implication, in my opinion, is both offensive and potentially harmful. If the simple act of arguing imperfectly for a functional definition of gender is enough to be impugned for irresponsible messaging, I would argue that Riley herself does not meet her own standards for communication. The evidence of this is that her own community, as well as third parties covering this, have struggled for days to understand her argument, proving it is no more concise or clear than the one she decries me for. Here are some examples of Riley going back on her own arguments, despite claiming no reasonable person could disagree with her. I just wanted to like say it instead of saying it in text, because I okay. think you're misinterpreting me. Like there, there was a point in time where you were talking about it on stream to people where you were saying, well, if you disagree with my argument, then you're not one of the reasonable people and you banned people because of it. Oh yeah, no, and I don't. So yeah, no, you're I, the one defining reasonable in that situation. Yeah, I think in that situation, it's pretty clear. Like, I, I genuinely think that if I do everything I can to be able to explain something, and if I'm able to go back, like, yes, like, yes, in that instance, I am making a, like, I am making a judgment call myself for what reasonable right. is. Yes. Right. No, I, Whereas I, in the legal, so in the legal documentation, the reason why it works is because it's judged by twelve of your peers. Yeah. Or six. Well, or I mean, eight not. Or I mean, like generally, like, uh, it, sure, that's how it works well, out practically. But like in concept, it's supposed to be just like if we were to construct a hypothetical person and then sample the entirety of a population for what that average for like um the average beliefs in that population, then like the hypothetical person would represent so, those average beliefs. So, so would you define Liss as a reasonable person? Um, probably, yeah. So Liss misunderstood your arguments in Demon Mama's debate. Okay, I don't know why. I think that in that respect, she was probably... Like, I would say in that respect, if any... Like, I would say in that respect, she was acting unreasonably. I'm not saying that she's a completely unreasonable person, but I genuinely do not know how I couldn't have, how I could have been clearer. Yeah. No, I mean, like, and that, and that's kind of my, no, that, that maps on to my understanding, because essentially, like, what you described, and I don't know, maybe I should just get away from this terminology, like, if it doesn't help me actually explain mm -hmm. things about people, uh, to people, if it doesn't help me explain things about, to people better, then mm -hmm. I won't use it, um, mm -hmm. but I mean, like, that essentially maps on to my understanding of, like, objectivity, right? Now, if mm -hmm. that's not useful for these conversations, then I won't use it, but, like, that's kind of, like, the way that I've explained these ideas that, like, broadly... The second claim circulating at the moment is a broader claim about the irresponsible use of my platform as a trans person, with the conclusion that I should be deplatformed. I believe that this is even less substantiated than the first claim. Not only do I invest an incredible amount of time and thought to the content that I create, but I also do my best to remain accountable to my community, 
my peers, and my colleagues. While I may not always agree with every single criticism levied in my direction, there are countless examples of my willingness to engage in self-critique, public critique from peers, and critique from my viewers at large on my channel. However, none of this has been given any weight whatsoever or even recognized as existing by Riley or Destiny this week. Instead, it has been ignored in the name of framing me as an irrational, unaccountable, and irresponsible person. For anyone familiar with my work in the least, the claims of my irresponsibility are obviously false given how much time and effort I put into sourcing and informing my opinions. However, to the masses of Destiny's audience, who were primed by both Destiny and Riley to interpret my words with no charitability whatsoever, the substance and content of my work appears to be of no importance, especially with regard to their willingness to claim I am an irresponsible public trans person who should not have a platform to speak. Once again, I urge those who believe that I am somehow irresponsible to analyze my work critically and independently, because these claims could not be further from the truth. In addition, the idea that I should be deplatformed simply for disagreeing with Riley after she came on my show and started an argument with me, which I was not comfortable with, is simply outrageous. Finally, let me address the third claim, that I am a bad faith interlocutor who uses abuse tactics and manipulative language. These terms are all so vague as to be useless. Riley herself at one point made an entire video about how carelessly the term bad faith is tossed around. I would like to note that the core of these claims comes from Destiny, who, in his appearance on Riley's stream, accuses me of using tactics he himself admits to using on other people. Have you ever heard of the concept of crazy making? Uh, no, I've never heard of that. Okay. So imagine that we're having, um, so some people are really good at appearing calm. I think I'm really good at appearing calm. And I think Demon Mama is very good at appearing calm. Um, the idea is that I needle and I poke you and I prod you and I piss you off until I've said things that are like genuinely hurtful and pretty insulting. And then when you start to get emotional, I sit there and I'm like, why are you so upset? What's wrong? Why are you like this? Destiny and Riley do not provide substantial evidence of my utilization of any such tactics. I find it very odd indeed that Destiny would attempt to prove that I was being manipulative by pointing out that he is dishonest and manipulative as a conscious tactic. This is an assumption of my intentions, which he cannot know. He proceeds to coach Riley on how to use these manipulative tactics on others. We both do the little bit of a little bit of interrupting here and there, a little bit of ranting here and there. We both do that. We're both a little performative in that way. But it was you who did accuse me of I'm being. Not, I don't. I don't do performative oh. shit. Given the history I have truthfully presented in this video, I think it stretches the imagination to claim that I was engaging in any sort of bad faith with Riley. In fact, given how open and vulnerable I was willing to be with her, and how that was interrogated and disrespected, I would argue I engaged in better faith than even Riley herself. This is especially true when taken in the context of Riley's actions following our debate, which has been to ceaselessly pursue the impugning of my character and my reputation for days while I did not reciprocate whatsoever. This unplanned debate, which I obviously contested to on the spot multiple times, which followed from fun, meme debates about frivolous topics, was neither pleasant nor constructive in my view. And, since the debate happened, a simple analysis of my own actions and Riley's actions will reveal that only one of us intended to carry this issue beyond the night of the debate itself. Riley. Only one of us has monetized the fallout of this event. Riley who on her seven hour plus Wednesday stream was showered in donations, comments, and thousands upon thousands of views from Destiny's community, which was openly promoting her in the chat throughout the day before using the Twitch raid feature to send 2.7 thousand Destiny chatters directly into her channel. Simply looking at the staggering difference in views between her usual videos and her maliciously edited video on me should reveal the corrupting incentives at play. Nonetheless, I am the one being accused of being bad faith. I am the one being accused of being manipulative. I am the one being accused of abusing the goodwill of the audience at large. 
I think the evidence here speaks loudly and clearly in my favor, despite the misleading claims of those who orchestrated this drama. In conclusion, Riley's behavior towards me this week has been inexcusably dishonest, aggressive, and inconsiderate. She has virtually torched her entire core community and ruined the trust many people in her audience once held for her. And for what? To hurt me? To curry favor from a more powerful streamer? Since Monday, I have been subjected to a cascade of spurious criticisms, hyperbolic claims backed up with no evidence, and outright transphobia as a result of Riley's actions. I have not participated. This has not been a back and forth. This has not been a squabble between communities. Instead, this has been a one-way campaign of anger, cruelty, and hatred pointed directly at me. I am tired of this meaningless, dishonest, and toxic discourse. I am tired of the grave emotional toll on our communities and mod teams. I am tired of being lied about so blatantly. I am tired of the hard work I put in to my content being obscured by two other streamers' obvious spite and drama. If you have reached this conclusion and you are unsure about me or my content, I implore you to look for yourself. Ideally, without the unfair framing of individuals who hate me and who have openly admitted to using manipulative tactics on those that they hate. Thank you, and may this drama burn in hell.